Hello everyone and welcome back to another episode of Adoptions from the Heart TV. I'm your host, Amanda Aliberti. Hopefully you were able to see our previous segment where we sat down with a birth father, Samai, an adoptee, Carly, and an adoptive mom, Denise. They were all able to come together and ask each other specific questions about their personal journeys with adoption. We're going to continue that discussion today as we talk more with our adoption triad. Literally guys, we're seeing responses off of even just our Facebook videos that run of people commenting on how powerful your stories are and they can't believe that you're talking about it. Um, so we're right. just so excited and that's why we wanted to have today because we thought it'd be really neat to connect everybody. And Carly, right. before, it's almost like we're bridging the gap between all right. the important figures within adoption. Right. And I give adoptions from the heart a, a lot of credit in doing um, this series, particularly during this time in our nation's history, right? Mm -hmm. um, because this is not easy conversations always to be had. Um, I know our conversation was one that was, you know, a very open and you guys were open to listening to my one perspective and none of us are a monolith, so no one represents all of the culture, <laughs> right? But you were very open to hearing my feedback and how I felt. And, and I think that's great because that's the only way things can, um, people can get more exposure to differing opinions is by hearing people. Yeah. Well, and you know, it, it, it's hard. Like we've I've spoken to all of you in, on your separate videos, talking about race is not easy. And even within right. adoption, the same the same rule happens where where people just get uncomfortable and even for myself as a white individual coming on these videos and talking about race is not always the easiest thing but i think coming into an open right. mind and just letting people know that i'm doing my best i don't always say the right right language or know all the answers but we're all learning from each other right yeah, yeah. can i ask each of you um to first name something that if is there anything you wish would have gone differently in your connection to adoption? And then on the other hand, what are you most proud of through through your connection to adoption or adoptions from the heart? I'm, go I'm gonna start with, with, uh, with Miss Carly. <laughs> I guess something, maybe something that I wish would have gone differently. First of all, I think that when I was adopted, um, I was adopted in 1996 and I don't know what the data is that shows like how common adoption was at that time. I know that it's become more common as time has gone on. Um, but it wasn't something that was necessarily talked about very much when I was younger. Um, within my house, sure, like if I asked questions, but in terms of like just in, in terms of like the, the societal influence too, like it just wasn't really talked about. It's kind of one of those things like you had mentioned that's like hush hush, like people didn't really talk about that. Adoption is not really something that's talked about a lot unless you're in it. I think just growing up, I wish it could have been more commonly accepted um, in a way or just people willing to engage more about it and like not be judgmental about it and just be willing to talk about it without that awkwardness, I guess, because I'm an open book as well. So like if people ask me, I'll tell them. So I just wish it wasn't really something that people tiptoe around so much, I guess. Um, but on the flip side of that, I think it has created me to be who I am today. And I think it's given me a better, well-rounded view of the world and the people that I'm surrounded by. And although there's a lot of difficult parts that come with it, I think that I probably would be a completely different person if I didn't have it. So I'm just thankful for the way that it impacted me as a human being. I think it's given me a lot of assets that I wouldn't have had if, if I hadn't have been adopted. So. Well mm -hmm. said, Carly. <laughs> um, mm -hmm. Denise, can I ask you this? Thank question? you. Um, sure. What would I have liked to have gone differently? Hmm. I think ideally I would have liked, you know, to have had my um, son have access to his to knowledge of his birth parents. Um, and I, you know, I wish it had things if things had gone differently, perhaps if his birth mom had made a choice to have more openness. I mean, selfishly, I can't say that I necessarily wanted full openness, 
Um, and maybe that is selfish on my part. But um, I would like to have had her um, choose more openness. If, if, if So that that's what I wish had gone differently. Because I think that would be important for my son. Um, because right now, mostly what I can say is I don't know. And I'd be very, you know, I'm very honest with him. Um, the one thing that I'm most proud of is that my son has, will never be able to tell anyone when he found out he was adopted because it's just something he has always known. That's what I'm most proud of, is that it's something that he's always known. Um, I'm also proud of the fact that even though he's been at the same school, you know, since he was in kindergarten, he's in fourth grade now. It, you know, it never was something that I felt needed to be shared because of education. Um, and if I thought it had to have been shared, I would have, but it just was nothing that was needed to be shared and that when he was in second grade he made the choice when he did his timeline to say you know I was born this day and mommy adopted me this day that was on this timeline and the school was calling me like what <laughs> you know because they just you know and it's a small private school and wonderful relationships that we had built there and it was again never a secret um, I'm proud of that I'm proud that my son um, is proud of and doesn't have any shame in 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 his adoption. I'm proud of that. Thank you, Denise. So Maya, I'm going to ask yeah. you the same question, but before I do, I want to ask you something that I feel like people might be wondering. When when you hear Denise speak, as well as Carly, talking about how she had a closed adoption um, and Denise hoping that she could have had more openness for her, her son, does that make you proud of the fact that you do have an open adoption with your son and encourages you to continue with that because you see how powerful it can be? Oh, I mean, make sure I'm right. yeah, um, almost definitely, um, because you know, even after hearing Rizzo's story, you know, it's you know, it kind of like, uh, you know, solidified, you know, my position as wanting to be more involved. You know, also knowing that, you know, and 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 just you know, throughout my life, there are men out there that want to be in their children's lives. You know, like we're all not like. Uh, just bad fathers or whatever the case may be. Like sometimes we do fall into bad situations. Um, so yes, definitely. And, and just, you know, that's just myself anyway, just wanting to be in my child's life. Thank you. I, I feel like people were thinking that and I wanted you to have a moment there. Um, same question for you, Samai. Is there anything you wish could have gone differently? And then what are you most proud of? Um, I would say most definitely I would uh, I would love for the birth mother to be more involved um, you know just to see how you know great of a child that she has um, uh, you know through the situations you know I understand and hearing other story other people's stories you know I understand that you know it can be hard um, and it might be some things that some people don't want to address at this time, but I feel as though that with her, you know, having more openness to even, you know, even accept just, you know, maybe some pictures or something, you know, that would, you know, it would just help. Um, what I am most like most grateful for or thankful for, is that the other part of the question? Yeah, or most, or most proud of? I would say, I would say moments like this, um, you know, because you know how how open and honest I am about myself. You know, I you know I just want to just it doesn't it doesn't bother me. You know, um, it doesn't it doesn't bother me because I know my truth. So hmm. <laughs> you know, so it just allows me to exploit that, and you know, and especially about something you know so dear and you know impactful in my life. You know, I, I, all I wanted to be is, you know, just be in my children's life, so. Mm -hmm. well, just just know that your story is being heard and the fact that you want your truth to be out there, like, that's just really powerful. So thank you so much. Mm -hmm. um, Car I know okay. Car Carly sharing her experience of being black and being raised by white parents um, received a lot of great feedback from the community. Um, mm -hmm. Carly, can you just kind of touch on that for a minute, just kind of spark some discussion with Samai and Denise of how, how that went for you and what you kind of learned through that process? 
Yeah, for sure. I think that that's one of the things that um, I share about the most within just the my, my own adoption process and my experiences. I was adopted by white parents and raised in central Pennsylvania. So, I mean, it, it's rural and I was one of maybe six or seven kids of color at my school. Um, very, very small Christian school. Like there, there wasn't a ton of diversity around me in my life. And so besides my own siblings, I, I have two adopted siblings as well. So I guess we were kind of our own little melting pot within our house, so to speak. But um, besides that, most of my, my friends in elementary school, everything, they, they were all white. And so um, I think that it, it has caused me to kind of have a foot in two worlds, so to speak, because I, um, I obviously, I'm, I'm African American and I'm very proud of my roots and I'm proud to be black and, and to celebrate that part of my culture and my identity, it's very important to me. Um, but at the same time, I also had to assimilate to pretty much a white culture growing up. So I had to be able to balance both. So I obviously got comments like, you're not really black, you talk white, you know, that kind of stuff. And kind of sent me into like this spiral of almost like an identity crisis at a young age. Cause I'm like, they're telling me I'm not black, but I know I am. Like, I'm not white. <laughs> so what does it mean to talk white? I don't understand that. You know, I think that I, and I naturally was born into a home where I also received a certain type of privilege in a way, because I was able to be treated a certain way that some of some other black people might not be treated by other people. And so like, it was just a constant kind of push and pull for me. It was hard to navigate for me and it would make me really frustrated sometimes because I just didn't appreciate the comments that people had. So um, it took me a while to figure out how to embrace that and to also be happy and proud of that because it's still a beautiful thing. And I'm very happy that I'm able to bridge the gap between both sides also. So it's it's a blessing for sure. But I think it, it became kind of frustrating as I grew up, especially because I'm, I was learning more about myself and I was growing and trying to find myself. So it just made it more yeah. complicated for me sometimes, but I've learned better now how to deal with that. So do you have any regrets? Do you, do you wish that it, were there ever times where you do wish that you had been placed with black parents as opposed to white parents? Mm. Yeah. I mean, I don't know because I, it's, it's almost like I can't even imagine that at this point because my entire life, I just didn't have that. So it's hard for me to, to imagine what that would be like. I feel like that would be a completely different life almost. Um, I think more so if, I, I haven't really necessarily had the thought of, I wish I was adopted by black parents, but I have had the thought of, I wish I had a relationship with my black parents like my my birth parents i've had that thought before of what would life be like if i was raised by them but i haven't necessarily had the thought of i wish i was adopted by black parents just because like this has been my my whole life and it's been like such a a, a special part of my journey that makes me unique and so i can't really imagine anything different but i have had the thought of what if i was raised by my my black parents for sure Mm -hmm. Denise, do you have a response to any of what, what she said? I, I, I saw you very engaged. Yeah. Yeah. It's just, it's just beautiful to have us all be here talking, coming from a different perspective, you know, because um, it's just, you know, everyone's journey is their own. Um, but I do know, I, you know, my, my son's mother, uh, birth mother did chose, um, did choose the closed adoption. Um, I'm a single parent. I adopted as a single parent. Um, I do know that she had the choice of um, at least several other um, married couples. Um, and I do know that something that was, you know, that she said was that she wanted him to be raised with someone of similar heritage as him. So I can only believe that I may have been the only black person who she was shown. Um, I don't know that to be the case, but based on that comment of her wanting someone with similar heritage and based on the narrative that the typical person might think a two, 
parent family is the better family. Um, I, I suspect that certainly if I wasn't the only black um, family that she could choose, I know that I was at least one of few. I suspect I was the only black person. That's my, you know, that's my that's my suspicion. Um, and so, you know, I think I mentioned in the in the video that um, I did. I don't know if everyone else had a chance to see it, but it troubles me that um, African American birth parents don't have choice or as much choice as I would think that it would be ideal that they have when they make that very difficult decision to place their children with um, place their make an adoption plan for their children. Um, it troubles me that they don't always have the choice of families that they would like. So I don't know if Samai can weigh in. I don't know if your son is being raised by black parents or white parents. But. As a parent who who I you know I mean who picked the parents that you know was going to take my son, you know, it it was something that gravitated her to you because. Yeah. That's that's how it was for me. It was something that gravitated me to the family, although I was given a very diverse pick and I had very a very diverse option. It was something that literally gravitated myself to them. And I'm gonna say this is, you know, you look like a mother, you know, and you are a mother, you know. So that you know, what I'm saying like that's how I envisioned them. Like once I saw the couple, was like. That's them. Yeah. That's them. We had a, uh, as for Carly, we had a, um, a discussion about, you know, how, you know, what your thoughts uh, and whether, you know, you had to, to choose from a, an African-American family and an, uh, a Caucasian family being, you know, uh, a black adopted, uh, adopted parent, um, birth father. Um, for me, it was, you know, um, there there probably wouldn't have been no different because um, just off of my assumption and, and perception of all the options that I had, each each one of the families will have been able to offer my child, you know, the opportunities. Um, okay. One, you know, to me, how I feel, they wouldn't have been there if they if they couldn't. Um, so they would have been able to, right. uh, because like you get a background, you, I, I get you get a, right. a, a a nice background of the family. So they each could have provided opportunities for my child. It was just, you know, one would pull me to the family, and then you know, keeping my child close to his heritage, you know, mm -hmm. the best as possibility, and you know. You know, it's, it's great and people should know that regardless of who or what roof you came up under, you know, you can embrace your heritage without with having very minimal resources to your heritage around you. So thank yeah. you for that too. Yeah, that's that's very true. And I think that that's something that I, that my, my parents did a very good job of, of doing is that even though they don't look like me, they were very, very, insistent upon making sure that I understood um, to be proud of my heritage. And they were very big on representation, the dolls that I played with, the shows that I watched, making sure that I I was still exposed within my home to my background, which was really important. Um, but yeah. the, and then in, in addition to that, for both of you, I just appreciate a lot hearing your guys' experiences because you know, as, as a child who was adopted, I, and, and I don't have kids, so like, I don't know, first of all, I'm not a parent, so like, there's so many complexities to being a parent that I always just admire parents out there, like, a any parent, it's, it's a huge thing to be a, a mom or a dad, so like, I think that that's just wonderful, but it's also really helpful for me to hear about the adoption process from both of you, because I, I don't really know much about that to be honest like I don't really know much about the process or how that feels like going through that whole thing so like for me hearing from both of you like this is one of the first times before obviously besides my own parents who adopted me hearing about what this what it's like to be in this this kind of position so I just want to say thank you to both of you because this this is helpful for me and I really just thank enjoy you. hearing about it having a forum like this 
and doing things like AFTH TV, where we're putting people's stories out there, is increasing awareness and people are becoming more familiar. I mean, even for Carly to say right today, like connecting with you two is, is making me learn so right. much more. That's exactly what our audience is receiving. And I think the more awareness right. we can spread about adoption and the different perspectives that you're all talking about, the more that we're gonna see numbers of participating people because people are talking about this, right? It's not this hush-hush conversation. Right. People are willing to be open about it. Right, right. Well, to kind of wrap up this season of Black Voices in Adoption, I just wanna give you all an opportunity if there's anything else that we're missing or something else that you feel like should be said, um, just regarding these topics we've been talking about, I just wanna give you all that space to do so. Any other final words? Um, I feel like just, I think I, I've just from my end, I'm thankful for um, an opportunity like this. I think that these, these things don't necessarily happen very often. And it's kind of under, it's under tough circumstances just because of everything that's been going on in our society right now, like it's heartbreaking and it's very frustrating. But I think that these moments are the kinds that we need to have more often in order to bring unity and understanding in a way that like we're just talking but yet so many people are have been reached by something like this so for me i just i don't really have much else to say other than like i'm just thankful to be a part of something like this just by like speaking so i'm just thankful for the opportunity and and thankful for samaya and denise also for just being honest and for just talking about what parenthood is like for you guys, so. Right, right. And I've enjoyed um, talking to um, Carly and Samai. It's, it's just been, it's been good, you know. Um, I am open to, you know, more conversations with Carly and Samai, not even on, you know, in front of the TV. So I'm, you know, happy to share my information um, with Carly if she would like to, you know, hear a person's perspective that's mine it's just my one person perspective um and I, you know I'm, I'm just grateful um i would like to encourage more single parents who or or a single hopeful adoptive adoptive parent and so you know i, I would just encourage people to um to to, to if, if it's on your heart to become a parent to consider adoption I would say, I would say just, you know, kind of piggyback off of what Denise said is that, you know, adoption isn't, you know, a bad thing. Uh, it's offering your child an opportunity that you might not be able to do at that time. Um, you know, I'm very thankful for the opportunity um, that I've had in my experience with adoption. Well, guys, I think these last several months, especially with COVID, has just created a lot of emotions and uproar within our world and our country. And I think specifically in the last several months, um, there's just been a lot more awareness of what's happening within the Black community. And a lot of things have been brought to light. And I think Adoptions from the Heart was just trying to do our part by giving a platform to what we've been seeing. And I'm really grateful that we have had such amazing, amazing clients such as yourselves come on camera and share your story and if nothing else COVID has created Zoom and brought all of these wonderful <laughs> together a platform like Zoom to bring people together in many ways that maybe we wouldn't have been able to do otherwise um, is really awesome right. so um, I'm, I'm happy that you all have taken something away from this and let's just continue having these conversations Thank you so much to Denise, Samai, and Carly. We have received amazing feedback about your stories and we're just really excited that everyone was able to hear you guys talk about your personal journeys with adoption. That wraps up our season of race and adoption at AFTH TV. And again, we just wanna thank you all for your amazing support. Um, we've received your comments and your feedback and we clearly can see that this has been working and we're excited that you are all interested in some of these really powerful discussions. Thanks so much guys.